for us the weight of every curse upon him oh one final breath he gave as heaven looked away the son of god was laid in darkness a battle in the grave the war on death was waged the power of hell forever broken the ground began to shake the stone was rolled away his perfect love could not
aren't you glad he's alive today? Is he alive in you this morning? I am so glad that he, he died, but he rose again. Death ha does not have the victory, amen? Well, happy Resurrection Sunday to you. We welcome those of you who are here in the house, those who are watching online. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Are you glad this morning? Are you thankful for the work on Calvary? I know I am. You know, when you think about this being Resurrection Sunday, resurrection means to get up. And the very fact that you got up today, you've had your own resurrection, that you were able to get up. And I'm here to tell you that no matter what you're going through, no matter what you've been through, the very fact that you are here today means that there is life on the inside of you, and that is something to celebrate. Can you say amen to that? Why don't you give God thanksgiving for this day that he has made? We want to we wanna welcome you today. As we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we want to welcome you today and let you know how much God loves you, yes. how yes. much God uh, uh, really gave his very best from heaven for you. And child of God, you are worth it. Yes. I said yes. you are worth it. People might have said you have no worth. I'm here to tell you today that you have yes. worth. Turn yes. to your neighbor and say, you are worth it. You are worth it. You are worth it. You are worth it. All right, enter into praise and worship, amen? Hallelujah, put your hands together for Jesus. He's worthy, hallelujah. Shout it to God with a voice of triumph. We serve a great, great God, hallelujah. Come on, everybody, let's go. Say, say, risen, he's risen, forever glorified. Everybody say, risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say yo. Oh, 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 Hallelujah. Say yo. Oh, 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 Father, we magnify your name. We exalt 
exalt your name. We exalt your name. Hallelujah. We serve a risen Savior. Hallelujah. Go on, everybody. Same power. The same power. The same power that crushed the enemy. That crushed the, the same power.
many of you did he pick up? How many of you did he turn around? How many of you did he place your feet on solid ground? You ought to give him a shout of praise and thanksgiving this morning. Come on, tell your neighbor, get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that. Come on, y'all. Get up, get up, get up. you again. Now, if he turns you around, then turn around one time, if you will. Come on, turn around one time. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! He turned me around, placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the master. I thank God. Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but there's a couple of times he picked me up and turned me around. There's a couple of times I was going in the wrong direction. Can I get just one witness? Hallelujah, hallelujah. I want you to look at your neighbor's back. Look at their back, look at their back, look at their back. Turn around so you can see your back. Now I want you to notice nobody in here has angel's wings. Nobody in here is perfect. Somebody's been turned around from something. I know that you've been turned around and, and nobody in here is sprouting any angel's wings. So nobody in here is perfect. All of us got something to thank the master for. All of us got something to thank the savior for. All Can of us say? came out of a grave. Yeah, yeah, All yeah, of amen. us came out of a grave. Hallelujah, but he turned us around yeah. and he placed our feet on solid ground. How many times did you think you were sinking but he lifted you up? How many times did you think you weren't gonna make it and he picked you up? I'm telling you, nobody should have to pump you to praise God. All you gotta do is think about where he's brought you from and what he's done for you. I thank God. I thank the master. I thank my savior. Is he your savior today? Raise your hand if he's your savior. He's my savior. He's my master. He's my everything. Amen. Awesome job. Awesome job. Thank you so much. Great package. Thank you. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. He wants to sit down. Let me have this part. We're so glad you're here today. As I said earlier, before you're seated, greet someone. Let them know how glad they, you are to see them this morning. Sometimes the devil, the devil has us bound with things, and it's almost like we're in a grave, but it's time to get up. Amen? Get up out of that grave. Whatever holds you bound, has you bound, you can get up just the same way Jesus, is cause Jesus did, because he's on the inside of us. Amen? Amen. Well, we're so glad you're here to celebrate his resurrection with us this morning. Every time we gather, we're looking for fir to have first-time guests with us. And we'd like to acknowledge our guests, not to embarrass anybody, but let you know how glad you are that you, glad we are that you chose seeds. 
So do we have any first timers here today? If you don't mind standing or raising your hand, stand up for a moment. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So glad you're here. Those of you in the balcony, thank you for choosing Seeds of Greatness. The Bible says the steps of a good man, the steps of a good woman are ordered by the Lord. And we believe God ordered your steps here today because he's got something for you to hear. Amen. And for you to experience. We don't, we don't think it's a coincidence. We believe you're here by divine appointment. Amen. Well, I'm going to share a few announcements and we're, we got just an awesome morning plan. If you want to do two services, hang around for the second one. I mean, people did that last week and we, it was blessed. Well, I want to first of all thank those of you who served and came out to support the Ross family last week as we uh, celebrated the life of Damian Ross Jr., who was only 19 years old and, and moved to heaven. You, you guys are amazing. That was probably the second largest funeral we ever had. This whole sanctuary was filled, most of the balcony was full, and people stayed, and over 500 kids, young people here. Probably was about 1,300 people here all together. And then we didn't plan for that many people for the, for the repast, for the food. Usually people go and they don't come back, but people stayed and, and our team members, our hosts and hostesses, stayed to help serve the family. Ushers stayed to help serve the family. It was wonderful. So we want to thank you on behalf of the Ross family, on behalf of Pastor and I. That's how you support people during this time. It's not a whole lot you can say, but you can show your support and you can pray. So thank you for that. In our marriage boot camp, that was awesome, right? All month long, we had a great time. And how about our Good Friday worship and healing service? I'll tell you what, that was a blessed, blessed time. I'm waiting to hear the testimonies of what came out of Friday night. I thought that one song, I should have been dead. Could have lost my mind. But my, I looked at my husband, and I thought about myself and my son. I had cancer. Our son was in a terrible accident. It could have been just Jerome, my husband, and Lauren left. But God. But God. There wouldn't have been any grandchildren. There wouldn't have been a daughter in love. But God. I'm thankful. When he sang that song, I should have lost my mind. I mean, so many times you go through things, right? It was powerful, just powerful. So I'm going to give you a few announcements, and then we're going to uh, continue to move forward. Uh, the lovely C. Pierce Memorial Scholarship application are on um, our website. You can, if you put that uh, slide up so they can um, know wh where to go to download the application. The deadline is coming up on the 14th of April at 1 p.m. That's the deadline. So if you're uh, applying for that scholarship, make sure you have everything in order and have your application in on time. And then in the second service today, our children's ministry is going to be doing a special, special program. They're calling it Walk with Jesus Experience. And th that upstairs is set up in a, an amazing manner. So if you know children, you want to bring them back, um, it's going to be a great time. We're asking that you check them in by 1015 so they can start promptly, okay? You don't want your kids to miss it. And then the bridge, that's our ministry fellowship group for ages 19 to 29. Anybody in that age? No, I'm, yeah, 19 to 29. Anybody in that age range? Stand up. I want to see who you are. We're planning a special game night. Yes, keep standing for a moment. It's going to be on Saturday the 13th. It's not a Bible study. It's not anything like that. It is a fun time, a fun night for you to be able to connect and meet other people your age. Uh, you don't have to know anybody. You think, I don't have anything in common. Yeah, you're in that age range. That's what you have in common. So come out. It's completely free. Don't, that's not costing anything. And uh, there's a QR code for you to scan the register, okay? You don't want to miss it. You can be seated. Thank you. Aren't you glad young people are in church today? I know I am. Thank you, Father. And then the healthcare team, we have a healthcare team here at Seeds of Greatness, and they are doing a community uh, health fair. It's coming up on April the 20th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. They've got lots of exciting things. They've got many presentations. Uh, they have vendors, different people presenting on various topics. So you don't want to miss it. It's a free event on the 20th of April from 9 to 1. And then one other thing I want to mention are we have a group uh, for our widows and widowers, and they are doing a, uh, a workshop called Rebuilding Our Lives Together. And that's on Saturday the 27th 
upstairs in the greenhouse. It's going to go from 10 to 1.30 p.m., and they'll be discussing different topics that, that help surviving spouses to remove stressors from their lives and maximize resources. We've got a whole team of uh, professionals coming in um, that day to present, and this, uh, again, is another free event. You don't want to miss it. It see, there's something for everybody. Something for everybody, but you got to partake. You got to come out. Uh, we, when Samuel Chan was here, it was so funny because he said, uh, people always say a family that prays together stays together. And you know what? He said, that's not always true. Divorce rate is as high in the church as it is outside of the church. So it's not always true that a family that prays together. He said a family that plays together stays together. Not discounting prayer. Don't be getting it twisted. We know prayer is important. But playing and have fun and enjoying your life. And that's why we do a lot of the things that we do so we can, we get a lot of word here, right? But we want you to enjoy each other, to have fun, your life to be a happy, fulfilled life. And that's why we uh, do so many other uh, things here as well, in addition to the, the word, okay? All right, well, this time we're going to receive the morning tithes and offerings. I was telling you, this thing is free, that thing is free, that thing is free. It's free to y'all, but somebody's paying for it, right? That's your tithes and offerings at work. When we can do things for free, we're happy to do it. So when you hear this is free, it's not because it doesn't cost anything. We're not passing the cost along because we are a blessed church. We are a blessed church. We are so excited for what God has done, what he's going to do. Uh, this past week, we, uh, Cease, did a, uh, you know, we partnered with the Hope Center. And we've done a, we do the last Thursday of each month, we pay for a dinner for the 500 participants, 300 participants at the Hope Center. And when we do that, our teams go over and serve. This week, this past week, it was our, our hospitality slash events team. And they had 25 members of their team go over and serve dinner at the Hope Center. Isn't that awesome? So we're doing that once a month. And then that Tuesday before, we provided pizza for the after school program there. So we're doing all kinds of things. And this is a result of our tithes and offerings given out into the community, blessing ministries around the world, okay? And we're doing it together. When you get to heaven, somebody from Turkey might come up to you and say thank you. You're like, why are you thanking me? I don't know you. Are you from Seeds of Greatness? Yes. Well, every month, your church sent a check to the missionaries in Turkey to preach the gospel to a Muslim country. A Haitian person might come up to you and say, are you from Seeds of Greatness? I just wanted to say thank you. Do you remember that song, Thank You for Giving to the Lord? I'm a life that was changed. That Haitian person, you'll say, I don't know you. How do you know me? Because your church gave to the university that trained pastors and uh, professionals get their degrees and to change a country. Thank you for giving to the Lord. Amen? A little Dominican kid might come up to you, even, even in this life that we're living, saying thank you. It's like, thank you? Well, your church helped sponsor Julia and Gieberson, and they preached the gospel to us after we finished playing volleyball. That's the missionary dollars. All right? So that's what's happening with your tithes and offerings in addition to everything that happens here. Amen? And we're looking forward to the next phase of what God has for us. Amen? I guess by now you got your offering ready, right? Why don't you stand with me? I'm going to pray. Um, the directions, uh, there, if you want to give electronically, there's a text to give code. Uh, if you want to give to our scholarship fund, we're going to be awarding those scholarships in June. The code is up there for that. Or if you just need an offering envelope and you want it, don't want to give electronically, there are offering boxes as you exit uh, the, the building today. You can just drop it in there. Amen. Oh, that was a lot, right? Amen. Well, Father, we are just so thankful. We're thankful that we, uh, have, you have blessed us to be able to give back to your work, Father. We don't give grudgingly or of necessity, God, but we are a thankful people. God, I thank you today for every tither, for every offering giver that's here today, Father. I thank you that the devourer is rebuked for our sake and the windows of heaven are open unto us. 
And Father, as we give today, I ask that you bless those who even don't have to give. God, that they may have to give at another time in the name of Jesus. And we give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, our mass choir, I'm going to ask you all to come on up. Our mass choir is going to come at this time, and you are going to be so, so blessed as the mass choir comes through that door. They're coming. They're coming. The mass choir is coming.
Let's give the mass choir another big praise the Lord, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Let's give them another big praise, God, for the great job they've done. Hallelujah. Praise God's name. Praise God's name. Right on, King Jesus. No man can hinder me. Thank you, Jesus. The truth of the matter is, when you walk with God, really, nobody can hinder you either. Can you say amen to that? Hallelujah. We're so thankful for you being here today. And those of you that are viewing online, we're thankful to God for his greatness and his goodness. And uh, we're thankful that you've set aside this day to honor the Lord by coming into his house and uh, worshiping with us. We're thankful we don't take it for granted. There's a lot of choices that you have out there that you could have chosen, and you've chosen to share it with us, and we value that, we honor that, and we thank God for that. Uh, this is the last Sunday of the month, I guess, right? These years move rather fast, and this is why it's so important that whatever we're going to do for God, we need to do it now and understand that God has a plan for your life. Nothing in your life happens by accident. I know sometimes things happen and we're not prepared for it, but I'm here to tell you that God has a way of turning things around for you and I when it doesn't look like it's going to change. I'm going to ask you to stand with me as we go before the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Once again, this, the, the choir, the musicians, under the direction of uh, Brother Milton Reeves, let's give them all a big praise, God, for that. These guys did a tremendous job. Thank you, Milton, for the great job, man. Yeah. You know, you never want to take for granted, you know, moments like this and services like this. You know, sometimes we, we take so much for granted that tomorrow is going to, we'll just do this again next Easter. But, you know, you don't know how many people didn't make it from last Easter to this one. And so when we have these times together, these moments that we have together, we will never be able to recapture this day again. And this is why you have to value the people that are standing beside you. You have to value yourself to realize that God has you alive for a reason and for a season. And we need to take full advantage of that and understand that there's a purpose in everything. Amen? Amen. Miss Ann, I know this isn't proper because uh, we do this, but it was your birthday yesterday, wasn't it? Today? <laughs> Happy birthday, sweetheart. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you. God bless you. Every time I see you, you remind me of my mom. That's why, you know, you know, I, I remember growing up in the projects in New Jersey, <clears throat> and your family was the first black family that I saw as homeowners. I was 12 years old, and I was saying to Lisa this morning, that's over 51 years ago. And you can't tell me that what we see in our younger age don't impact us as adults. And so thank you for that example, you and Brother Raymond, who's in heaven watching us. He graduated, but he's watching from the balcony. You know that, right? Yeah, so we thank you. Happy birthday, sweetheart. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this amazing day. It's your breath in our lungs that causes us to pour out our praise. And Father, we're thankful. We're thankful for everything that you have done for us, what you are doing for us, and what you will do for us in the future. Father, we don't take it for granted. We thank you that we're able to stand on our feet. We're able to breathe in our lungs. Father, we're able to lift our hands and thank you. Father, we, we don't take that for granted. And we so appreciate you, Jesus, for you willing to leave heaven to sacrifice your life for us. Even when we didn't know you, you knew us. And you were willing to pay the ultimate price of your life for us. 
and we so appreciate that. And then when you left, you sent the Holy Spirit. We appreciate it. Thank you. Amen. Say this with me. My faith is not fragile. My faith is not weak. My faith gets stronger every time I speak. Uh, bro, could I see your sunglasses, man? Them lights is bright up here on me. I just want to kind of, thanks, man. Yeah, okay. I guess you don't know what you're going to get on Sunday with me, right? Come on, my faith is not fragile. My faith is not weak. My faith gets stronger every time I speak. Come on, put your hands on your body and say, my body's not fragile. My body's not weak. My body gets stronger. My body gets stronger. I call my body strong every time I speak. I am blessed today to be alive. Why don't you give God praise and thanksgiving for that? Well, you may be seated in his presence. Well, I won't be before you long. I promise I'll have you out of here early. That's all a relative term. <laughs> but I got this message at 3 o'clock in the morning on Friday. I got up 3 o'clock, and the Lord dropped the message out of my heart. So I'm going to share it with you. I'm going to say amen, and I'm going to let you go home. Open your Bible to Matthew chapter 27, verse 45 in the New Living Translation. Matthew chapter 27, verse 45 in the New Living Translation. I'm going to read the scripture text, and then I'll give you the title, okay? All right. Matthew 27, verse 45, beginning at verse 45. Matthew 27, chapter 27 beginning at verse 45. I want to thank all of our guests who are here. We are honored that you have chosen Seeds of Greatness Bible Church, and uh, we're just glad that you're here, man. And if you don't have a church home, we welcome you to hang out. With, this is the Two Live crew. So if you want something to do, you can hang out with us. Yeah. And we like to have a good time celebrating. You think you had fun at the club. You ain't seen nothing yet, bro. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm just saying. All right, all right. This church is not like any church you'll ever experience. We dance, we shout, we wear sunglasses and robes. <laughs> all right, all right. This chapter 27 deals with the crucifixion of Jesus, and you know the story of how he was between two men, uh, two thieves, and one of them, uh, you know, uh, began to rail on him or say things to him, and the other one... Uh, began to kind of repent and Jesus said today you'll be with me in paradise and so you know we go into this and the Bible says that uh, he said some things here picking up in verse 45 if you got it can you give me a hearty amen, amen. it says at noon darkness fell up across the whole land until three o'clock about three o'clock Jesus called out with a loud voice Eli Eli lama sabbatani which means my God my God why have you abandoned me? Some of the bystanders misunderstood and thought that he was calling for the prophet Elijah. And one of them ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, holding it up to him on a, on a reed stick so he could drink. But the rest said, wait, let's see whether Elisha comes to save him. Then Jesus shouted out again and released his spirit. At that moment, the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two. Now notice it said from top to bottom. And it's significant that we see that it was torn from the top to the bottom because it wasn't from the bottom to the top man could have done that. Now you've got to understand that this wasn't just like a curtain you have in your house. This curtain was extremely thick. Some say two to three inches thick so that you couldn't tear it but it was torn from the top to the bottom, and it was signifying that God was no longer in heaven, but he was coming down to be among man. All right? And so it was torn from the top to the bottom. The earth shook, 
the rock split apart and the tombs open. The body, of many, the, godly, the body of many godly men and women who had died were raised from the dead. Now, I was thinking about this. As I was meditating on this scripture, I was thinking if I was alive back then and my mother and father are both deceased, I have two sisters who are deceased, they graduated to heaven, and I couldn't even imagine, I began to think about what would happen if I was living during that time and these family members of mine were already deceased and I'm sitting at home and all of a sudden I see my mother and my father. I see my two sisters walking up and, and they start talking to me, you know what, we going to heaven. I mean, because think about it, there had to be people that they recognized that was walking around when the curtain was rent. And it says the earth shook, the rocks split, and the tombs opened, and the body of many godly men and women who had died were raised from the dead. They left the cemetery. Whoo, Jesus. They left the cemetery after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city of Jerusalem and appeared to many people. The Roman officers and the other soldiers at the crucifix were terrified by the earthquake and all that had happened. They said, this man truly was the son of God. And many women who had come from Galilee with Jesus to care for him were watching from a distance. And among them was Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of James and John, the sons of Zebedee. Verse 57. As evening approached, Joseph, a rich man from Arimathea, who had become a follower of Jesus, went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. And Pilate issued an order to release it to him. Now get this, I want you to see this. Verse 59. Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a long sheet of clean linen cloth. Verse 60. He placed it in his own new tomb which had been carved out of a rock then he rolled a great stone across the entry and left I want you to focus on verse 60 he took the body he placed it in, a, in his own new tomb which had been carved out of rock then he rolled a great stone across the entry. My topic for you today that the Lord gave me at 3 o'clock in the morning is, what do you do when you're between a rock and a hard place? What do you do when you're between a rock and a hard place? Jesus' body was placed in a tomb, a cave, and a stone. One translation said a boulder was rolled in front of the tomb, a rock and a hard place. As we said here today, there are people that are either in one right now, they're going through one, or you're about to go through one in your future, a rock and a hard place. You know, I was thinking about this, and I thought about Joseph, how Joseph was working in the house of Potiphar, and Potiphar's wife laid her eyes on him and set him up and lied on him and said that he had raped her. And the Bible says that Potiphar was furious over the accusations of his wife against Joseph. And Joseph was put in prison, a hard place. Joseph was there and he was forgotten about for two years, a hard place, a rock and a hard place. Sometimes in life, you're going to go through difficulty. Sometimes in life, you're going to hit the wall. Sometimes you're going to come up against hard things. Jesus was in a rock on a hard place. Joseph helped people in prison. He helped the butler and he helped the baker and they forgot about him for two years. Sometimes you will help people who, for, who will forget about you. And this happened to Joseph. But Joseph didn't let what he went through to cause his heart to become hardened. And sometimes when you go through difficult things, you don't let it change you. Because when it changes you, then it wins. 
Sometimes people will break your heart. Sometimes people will let you down. Sometimes people will disappoint you. And sometimes you will help people that don't help you. A rock in a hard place. Joseph was there. I thought about the Apostle Paul in Acts chapter 14. The Apostle Paul had done a wonderful thing, but the Bible says when he started preaching, the people got upset and they stoned him. Uh, look with me in Acts chapter 14, verse 19. I want you to see this. Somebody say, rock and a hard place. Between a rock and a hard place. Look at Acts chapter 14, verse 19. Sometimes you're going to face challenges, brothers and sisters. Sometimes you're going to go through hard things. It was a hard thing when my mother died. It's a hard thing when my father passed. When my sister's passed, my wife got breast cancer. It was a hard thing that I went through. When my son was hit by a drunken driver, that was a hard thing that I went through. You're, because you are a Christian, it does not exempt you from trials and difficulties. Amen. But somebody say greater. greater. You got to say it a little louder than that. Say greater. greater. See, when you go through difficult things, you got to understand that the greater one is on the inside of you. And he gives you the ability to walk through the valley of the shadow of death without fearing evil or fearing the, the, the enemy who has come at you. Fear no evil. Can you say amen to that? Amen. The Bible says in Acts chapter 14, verse 19, it says, it says, Then some Jews arrived from Antioch and Iconium and won the crowd to their side. They stoned Paul and dragged him out of town thinking he was dead. And as the, 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 the believers gathered around him, what's the next three words? What's the next three words, church? Sometimes when people count you out, look at your neighbor and say, get up. Get up. I said, sometimes when people count you out, you've got to look in the mirror and say to yourself, get up. Brothers and sisters, you've got to learn to be your biggest cheerleader. Uh, you might not have somebody standing there with pom-poms cheering you on. You've got to cheer yourself on. You've got to, I said you've got to cheer yourself on. The Bible says he got up and went back into town. The next day he left with Barnabas for Derby. After preaching the good news in Derby and making many disciples, Paul and Barnabas returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch to Poseidon, where they, where they strengthened the believers. They encouraged them to do what? Mm. To continue in the faith. Now get this, reminding them that they must suffer many hardships to enter into the kingdom of God. A rock and a hard place. You're going to experience rocks in hard places, but also you're going, to, you're going to experience some smooth sailing. But I don't want you to be discouraged. I don't want you to be dismayed. I don't want you to lose heart. I don't want you to throw in the towel when you face some difficulties, when you hit some hard things, when you come up against some difficulties, when you come up against some challenges. The Bible says, think it not strange concerning these fiery trials, as though some strange thing is happening to you. Think about Jesus. He came to do good, and the people he came to help didn't like him. What do you do when you try to help people who don't like you? What do you do when people spit on your face and you're innocent? What do you do when people tear down your reputation and you didn't do nothing but good for, by them? My Bible tells me in John 16, 33, in this world you're going to have tribulation. You're going to have tribulation, I said. Amen. One translation says you're going to have some difficulty. I want you to know that you're going to have some difficulty. And I'm not making a negative confession over you. I just want you to understand that when it comes, you say, I was expecting you and I got something for you. <laughs> See, things are going to happen in your life. But, but, but notice what Paul did. Paul went and strengthened them to continue in faith. 
Your faith is the thing that's going to give you victory. What do you mean your faith? You're confident and trust in God when you face difficulty. God, I'm trusting in you. I don't understand it. As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I won't fear any evil, but I'm going to keep on walking. And child of God, sometimes you've got to tell yourself that in spite of what I'm going through, it's going to get better. In this world, you're going to have sorrows, you're going to have trials, you're going to have difficulty. You didn't see it coming, but it's not a surprise to God. You weren't prepared for it, but you can endure it. My Bible tells me in 2 Timothy 2, 3, he, Paul was talking to young Timothy, who was the pastor of the church at Ephesus. Paul says to young Timothy, he says, endure hardness. Endure hardness. What do you mean? Tolerate it. What do you mean? Put up with it. Don't quit. Oh, you need to encourage your neighbor. Tell him don't quit. Don't give up. Put up with it. Don't throw in the towel. Come on, they need some encouragement. Talk to them. I know they came in their Easter best but you don't know what type of test they're going through. That's why he says endure hardness as a good soldier. That tells me something, that as a good soldier, even good soldiers face hard things. You can be a good soldier, it doesn't exempt you. Listen, you can be a good soldier, but you got to understand the fact that you're a soldier, they're going to shoot at you. They're going to shoot off at the mouth at you. They're going to talk about your reputation. They're going to talk about your good and call it bad. But child of God, be a good soldier. What does a good soldier do? He keeps his armor on and he doesn't give up in the fight. And don't you give up. Don't you quit. Sure, they're shooting their mouth off at you. Might not be bullets, but their mouth can hurt just as well as a bullet. Shoot, sometimes I'd rather you shoot me than talk about me because at least if you shoot me, I can get the bullet out, but your words, I got to carry this in my mind now. People just shoot off at the mouth. It says endure hardness. Hardness is pain and hurt, disappointments and setbacks. As a good soldier, a good soldier shows up for duty. A good show, soldier is accountable. Because first thing, when they do that head count, they do those rounds, you better be in your bunk. Amen. He stayed a little late. He didn't come in last night. Be a good soldier. Because you can be a good soldier or you can be a bad one. Amen. A bad one is when the fight starts you can't find them. When difficulty shows up, they hide in their weapons. They're not familiar with what they have at their disposal. Good soldier. It says endure hardness as a good soldier. You know, Paul's saying this to young Timothy for a reason. Because Timothy's pastoring the church at Ephesus. And the church at Ephesus was going through a whole lot of persecution. And Paul had to tell Timothy, he, this is the same Timothy he told, take a little wine for the stomach's sake. You remember that? How many of you remember that one? Your hands go all up. We say a little wine for the stomach's sake. Everybody remember that one there, boy. Take a little bit for the stomach. He didn't say, Timothy, when, when the pressure gets on, get drunk, bro. <laughs> he didn't say, just buzz out. Just, just buzz out. Just buzz out. He said, take a little wine. <laughs> I said, Pastor, I got the wrong translation. <laughs> he said, take a little wine for his stomach's sake. Because Timothy, Timothy the, the Bible commentator said he was dealing with stomach ulcers because he was worried. Why was Timothy worried? Because as the pastor of the church, when persecution started, people started leaving the church. People that were standing with Timothy, when pressure came, they, they went AWOL, absent without leave. And there'll be people like that with you. As long as you got money, as long as you got food, as long as you got a car. Oh, they'd be your ride and die partner, but they ain't really ride and die partners, they just ride partners. 
Because when they get under a little pressure, they jumping out the window, they taking off the seatbelt, they getting out of there. And this is what was happening with Timothy. There was a lot of pressure going on in Timothy, and Paul had to remind him to endure hardness as a good soldier. And then he tells him in the book of Ephesians, he says, Timothy, put on the armor of God so that you can stand against the fiery darts that are going to come at you. And child of God, you're going to face fiery darts. The devil's throwing his best at you. And some of you, he has already thrown his, thrown his best at you, hoping it would break you, hoping it would tear you down, hoping it would cause you to give up, hoping it would cause you to turn on God. But look at you, you're still here. I said, you're still here. You need to give yourself a hand for that because if it had not been for the Lord on your side, where would you be? When people counted you out, God counted you in. So what do you do when you're in between a rock and a hard place? Number one, when you're in between a rock and a hard place, rise up. Nudge your neighbor real good with your right arm and tell him, rise up. Rise up. Now, then on your left side, hit him with your left arm and tell him, rise up. Rise up. Duh. Boy, I have lived this. I have lived this. Somebody shout, rise up. Rise up. Shout it again, rise up. Rise up. And I'll rise up. Write this down. Sometimes you got to talk up before you get up. Sometimes you got to talk up before you get up. What do you mean by that? You got to call things that be not as though they were. According to Romans 4, 17, I remember when I was writing out this and, and doing what God told me to do, I remember it came back to me, Lisa, when we just got started. At 9C4 Capano Drive, Cavalier Country Club apartment, one bedroom, just me and you with no kids. <laughs> I wasn't making a lot of money, $53 a week. She didn't ask for a prenup. <laughs> <laughs> I should have asked for one for you. <laughs> But I remember when we didn't have much, but we had God. Amen. Didn't even realize what I was saying when I was saying it. But I look back on it now and realize there was faith in it. What would I always say to you? It's not always going to be like this. I didn't have an answer. I didn't have an answer. I, didn't, I definitely didn't have no money. But I didn't have an answer. But I knew about the importance of my words. Sometimes you got to talk up before you get up. And I would say to Lisa, because I remember one time our washer broke. You remember that? And we couldn't figure it out. My parents helped us out. They, I think Sears was big back then. And they had a, a Sears thing. But then we were able to find that it was something wrapped around the ringer. You remember that? And we, we didn't get the washer. But I, I, remember, I remember those were some tough times, man. Challenging times. But we always spoke something in faith, not even realizing what I was saying. I would say to her, it ain't always going to be like this. I didn't know when it was going to change. I didn't know how it was going to change. But I knew if I kept walking with God, it had to get better. Amen. And I would say to her, it ain't always going to be like this. Brothers and sisters, if you still have breath in your body, you might have lost everything. You might have had to clean out your account to pay for some past indiscrepancies. And you might have had to start all over with nothing. As long as you have breath in your body, God's purpose for your life still sets so. He still has the purpose for your life. And sometimes you got to tell yourself that. You, you know, they used to have a song, and please don't be offended, it ain't over till the fat lady sings. She can sing, it still ain't over. And you've got to tell yourself that. 
it ain't over yet. I said it ain't over yet. Oh, you got to tell your neighbor, testify to him, say it ain't over yet. Look at him and tell him, I'm going to rise up. No, tell him convincingly, I'm going to rise up. So one of the first places you rise up is in your thinking. Sometimes you've got to rise up with your mouth and you've got to rise up with your thinking sometimes before your circumstances change. You've got to think differently. And the only way you can think differently about you, not your circumstances, because sometimes your circumstances will stay the same way for a long time. But listen, you can be in a prison and not be in a prison. As long as you don't allow your mind and the way you talk to keep you in bondage, child of God, you can rise up from where you are. You got to talk up. I'm coming up out of this. I'm getting better. Things are getting better for me. I might be walking now, but I'll be running tomorrow. I might not have any money, but I ain't broke. You understand? I said, I just ain't got no money now. You see me tomorrow, I might have a little something. I don't care if it's two pennies. It's still better than what it was yesterday. Every day, things are getting better. You got to talk to yourself like that. And not wait for somebody else to do it for you. The very fact that you have a mouth and you have a voice, then you need to use it to work for you and not use your mouth to work against you. I think about my brother over here, Greg. I mean, you, you top dog right now. But you was talking that before it happened. You were saying some stuff before it happened. He said, next year, I want to be this. I want to be this. He talked up before he was up, but he did something in the process. You understand what I'm saying to you? And brothers and sisters, it's like the woman with the issue of blood. Before she got healed, she says, I, if I can touch him, I'll get well. 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 And guess what she did? She got up and touched him, and guess what happened? She got well. And sometimes you got to talk your way through it as you're walking through it. Instead of sitting there and having a pity party waiting for somebody to pat you on the back, pat yourself on the back and get up and start going forward. You can do better than what you're settling for. I said, you can do better than, nudge your neighbor and say, you can do better than that. <laughs> now nah, you got to say it with a little bit of twang to it. Tell them, you can do better than that. Now you still ain't saying it right. You got to say it with a little bit of twang to it. You can do better than that. Yeah. Talk up, think up, rise up. Talk up, think up, rise up. Talk up, think up, rise up. It ain't always going to be like that. You might be going through some things in your body. Look at your body and talk to your body. Say, it ain't always going to be like that. But then stop doing the things that cause it to be like that. <laughs> Can't say, I'm going to believe God is going to get better. Yeah, but he's going to tell you to do some stuff. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Number two thing. Trust God. When you're in between a rock and a hard place, Number one, you got to rise up. You got to talk up. You got to think up. Number two, you got to trust God. What do you mean, trust God? That means you depend on Him more than yourself. Amen. You might say, this is too simple. It's the simple things. Listen, God hasn't made things complicated for us, we've made things complicated. We think we got to fast for 13 days and not eat food and spin around in circles and throw dust in the air. No, God says, listen, just depend on Him. There's been times I've faced situations I did not know what to do. And I've simply said, God, I don't know what to do. God, I'm trusting you. 
I remember when we were at 190 and they said that we needed $50,000 before we could drive the next nail into the, any work over to that building. We didn't have $50,000. I, rem I remember going down to that empty building by myself with just the construction lights on and walking around that building and say, Father, I'm depending on you. God, you're our source. God, you provide for us everything we need. God, we believe this is an assignment that you've given to us, and God, I'm trusting you. I didn't know where $50,000 was coming from. I never seen $50,000. <laughs> and to this day, to this day, that $50,000 came in. I don't know where it came from. I don't know where it came from. I don't know where that $50,000 came from. But, but you know what? I don't care where it came from either. See, sometimes we think, God, how are you going to do that? God, I got this debt. How, how are you going to do that? God, I don't have no money in my account. But how are you going to do that? God, I've been on this job for 30 years. How, how are you going to do that? Let me help you. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. I love the Message Bible. The Message Bible says, don't try to figure it out. Look at your neighbor, nudge them real hard, look them in their eyes so they almost get scared of you, and say, don't try to figure it out. I, 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 I don't know if they are convinced, but look at them again. Make your eyes bucked open. Like, don't try to figure it out. gonna find a man at my age don't try to figure uh oh, oh I hit something there didn't I I must have hit a hornet's nest I just gotta the scripture says don't try to figure it out see you looking at the package God's looking at the heart the thing that got you in trouble before you was looking at the package and found out that it was wrapping paper. God looks at, I'm sorry, God looks at the, God, God looks at the heart, man. Depend on God. Lean on him. Don't try to figure it out for yourself. Don't try to figure it out. They're trying to put two pennies together, trying to get a dollar. Don't try to figure it out. This is a widow picking up sticks, trying to figure out how she's going to live and survive her and her sons. Don't try to figure it out. God sent a prophet, and she had enough throughout the entire famine. Don't try to figure it out. You're faced with the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army chasing you, and you're trying to figure out, I've got a problem in front of me and a problem chasing me. Don't try to figure it out. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? You got a problem in front of you, the Red Sea. You got Pharaoh's army chasing you. You got your past chasing you. You got a wall called your future in front of you. So you've got your past chasing you and a wall in front of you and God is saying, trust me. Trust me. Can you say amen to that? Don't rely on just your ability. Don't rely on your education. Don't rely on your family tree. You know that family tree's got some nuts on it. He says, depend on me. It's got nuts and fruit. <clears throat> I didn't say whose family, so don't get offended. Because <laughs> we'll have a family feud. But listen. Psalms 34, 6 in the Message Bible. Psalms 34, 6 in the Message Bible. And I will close with this. Psalms 34, 6 in the Message Bible. I'm going to read it in the Message, and I'm going to read it in the Passion Bible, because I think it's important. When I was desperate, this is the third point, I called out. 
and God got me out of a tight spot. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever been in a tight spot before. But I've been in some tight spots, didn't know how I was going to get out, didn't know where the money was coming from, didn't know who was going to help me, but guess who got me out? God got me out of a tight spot. Tell your neighbor, God's going to get you out of a tight spot. I said, tell your neighbor, God's going to get you out of the tight spot. What is a tight spot? That's where you're being squeezed, where you can hardly breathe. That's when you're trying to put on jeans that don't fit. I'm just kidding. Okay, look what it says in the Passion Bible. <laughs> look what it says in the Passion Bible. <laughs> Listen to what it says in the Passion Bible. When I had nothing, is that what it says? When I had nothing, desperate and defeated, I cried out to the Lord. And he heard me, bringing his miracle deliverance when I needed it the most. And child of God, I'm here to tell you that if you'll talk up, if you'll think up, if you'll trust God, and cry out to him, he will get you out of a rock and a hard place in Jesus' name. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Won't you stand with me? Won't you stand with me? <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone who can stand, if you will. My brother and sister, no matter where you are right now, I want you to know it's not over. And your best experiences <clears throat> and your best days are not behind you. No matter what you've lost, no matter what you've been through, I'm here to tell you it's going to get better. If you will trust God, depend on God, lean entirely on him, and don't try to figure it out on your own, because if you do, you're going to frustrate yourself, and you're going to frustrate the people around you. You've got to sometimes just say, and I've done this many times, my wife and I, God, we put it in your hands. God, we put it in your hands. And what we've done when we put it in his hands, we don't try to hold it. You know, you hold it when all you do is talk about it. You hold it when all you do is share it with other people. When I put it in his hands, I release it. I stop talking about it. And I make a decision, according to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. We which have believed enter into rest. I'm going to rest and not worry. When the thought, because the thought will come back. The enemy, you know, the enemy is a harasser. He will try to harass you with thoughts and bombard your mind. His harassment doesn't go away by ignoring it. You hear what I'm saying to you? His harassment doesn't go away by ignoring it. You're going to have to use your mouth as a two-edged sword and begin to say some things out of your mouth. Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against me shall prosper, and every tongue that rise against me shall be shown in the wrong. For this is the heritage of the servant of the Lord and their righteousness of me. God, I'm dwelling in the secret place of the Most High, and I'm under the shadow of the Almighty, Psalms 91. Lord, you're my shepherd. I will not worry. I will not care. You lead me beside the still water, Psalms 23. You've got to have scripture in your spiritual arsenal. To be able to combat those thoughts that the enemy is going to throw his fiery darts at your mind and you've got to speak what you believe and not speak what you feel. Because you're going to feel like at times cussing people out. You, you will. 
And then you walk across the mountain and say it slipped. It didn't slip. <laughs> you was plotting and planning that for a long time, bro. You just wanted to find the right time to give them a piece of your mind. They come back, you got another piece for them. But you got to change that. If you want a different outcome, then you've got to do something different. Can you say amen to that? Amen. I'm going to ask the elders to come at this time. They'll be up front. If you are in a tight spot and you want someone to join their faith with you, you remember Paul was in a tight spot. They stoned him. Joseph was in a tight spot. You remember they lied on him. But Joseph got out of that tight spot because of his integrity. The Bible says when they stoned Paul, other believers stood around him and he rose up from being stoned. These men and women are anointed to pray with you and to add their agreement with you or if you are in a tight spot. We're going to dismiss the service, but they will be here even after the service is over to pray with you, to assist you, to guide you along the way of the word of God so that you can rise up and not be broken down in the name of Jesus. Lift your hands to heaven. Let me pray a blessing over you. Father, I pray the 91st Psalm over your people. That God, because they dwell in the secret place of the Most High and under the shadow of the Almighty, you keep them. Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare Psalms 23 over them. And Father, we declare over them that, Father, you're their shepherd and they do not want. Father, I pray a blessing on every family that's represented here today. Those in the sanctuary, those viewing online, thank you for viewing online. We thank you, Father, for the anointing of the Spirit of God that flows through them, the peace of God that's on them. God, may today be a blessed day for them. Father, may this week be a great week for them as we close out this month and step across the threshold into a brand new month. Father, may we rise up in our thinking. May we depend on you. And Father, may we cry out to you and ask you to be our helper. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. amen. God's blessings be on you. Thank you for being here today. Happy Resurrection Sunday.